All right, man, here's a little bit of a walk around video on the car. Um, I'll show you the outside first and we'll do a cold start and we'll drive it a little bit. So like I mentioned in the ad, look in here, along the front, top of the front bumper, there is uh, some peeling clear coat along here. Um, nothing on the hood, just a couple rock tips and stuff, you know, like any kind of car this model would have. And then uh, there's a little bit of peeling clear coat on the side mirrors and then a couple spots like on the forward edge of the roof along here. And then right here is that uh, rust spot. Let me get the camera here. Right here is that rust spot that I had uh, shown in one of the pictures there. Um, coming around the rest of it, I mean, a couple little door dings, a couple scratches, you know, nothing major, nothing that really stands out. Um, you know, it's from a, from a distance, you know, from five feet away, the car looks amazing. Um, this is that, the Heyman, the rear wing, and then the, um, the roof spoiler. Uh, one of the previous owners wrapped both of those in like black carbon vinyl. Um, and same with kind of this trim piece here. Uh, coming around the like the back side, you know, a couple more little scuffs here and there on the bumper, but again, nothing, nothing major. I mean, the body is solid. Um, you know, that spot on the hood or on the roof, and then this little tiny spot here on the trunk. Those are the that's really the only rust anywhere on the car. Um, I mean, the wheel wells are solid, no rust or corrosion or anything like that there. Um, the under underside of the car, uh, very little. Um, you know, just a little bit of surface rust here and there, but nothing, you know, nothing major, nothing structural, anything like that. Um, so, we'll hop in, take her for a drive. All right. Just my camera. rattling no creaks pops any weird shit like that you know a little bit of rattle when you go over bumps and that kind of thing um, it's because the car is a little bit lower um, obviously it's not nice smooth luxury highway cruiser I mean it'll cruise highway no problem but you know it's not as smooth as like a brand new car would be through the neighborhood here and then we got a couple of roads I'll kind of get on it a little bit um, like I had mentioned it's uh, doesn't have cats on it so you know depending on what emissions is like where you're at you know I can't speak to that but you know I can't make any promises that it'll pass emissions or anything noticed with this car and it, it kind of drives me nuts doesn't really affect anything is when it's a little bit colder out that gap for some reason the gas pedal squeaks when you step on it I've tried pulling it out remounting it I can't figure out what the hell the reasoning is for it but it just just squeaks a little bit it's a little annoying on it kind of hard here. misfires anything like that I mean I just did uh, plugs and coil packs not too long ago um, 
I mean, it, it runs awesome. It's very happy all the way up to seven grand. You know, it's gonna be a little bit quicker where you're at, because uh, you're close to sea level. I live at 6,000 feet, and uh, altitude is a huge, huge killer for power, especially in a naturally aspirated motor. Uh, you're probably familiar with that. But I mean, clutch is, clutch is smooth, you know, no, not overly light, not overly heavy. Your grab's perfectly fine. Um, you know, it's just, this car's just been a blast to drive over the last couple of years. Kind of sad that I'm in a situation where, you know, I kind of need to sell it, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. ECS tuning ones with their geomet coating, they're just slotted. Um, I had cross drilled on here before, and like a lot of cross drilled rotors, they did get cracks in them. So um, I'm personally not a fan of cross drilled, but yeah, so these, these slotted with the hot, the Hawk uh, HPS pads, um, they grab great, and they've only been on here, uh, what I say, like a little over a year now. And then uh, right right after I bought the car, I had an issue with one of the rear calipers seizing on me. And uh, so I went ahead and rebuilt uh, both the rear calipers and uh, I haven't had any issues with it since. Let me get turned around here. And like I mentioned, the to me the shifter bushings, it wouldn't be a bad idea to replace them. I mean, I've never had issues missing it, missing a shift or anything. But like you see, it's it's in first right now, and it does have a little bit of play in it. But uh, you know, that's kind of a, a preference type of thing. You know, I've lived with it, and uh, I was actually meaning to do the shifter bushings, but just never really had the time to do so. see down here it's got um, some video gauges there's a volt uh, volt gauge oil pressure and oil temp um, the voltage and oil pressure work perfectly fine the oil temp um, I think it might need a new uh, temp sender because uh, it's it, it kind of works intermittently um, as far as power stuff in here like I mentioned in the ad and you probably saw when I opened the door here it's got the uh, that seat out of an E46 for the driver's seat. Um, definitely a lot better bolstering than what the factory one had. And uh, the power function on the seat does work. 